Hello, I'm Stephen Coates and welcome to my studio. A number of years ago I posted a video on YouTube giving you a demonstration of this brush. So today I just wanted to show you another simple painting that you can do with this brush. I want to show you how versatile it is and how important it is to the watercolour artist. And don't forget this brush along with many other products is available on my website which is on the bottom of your screen now. So there it is, the hake or haki or hake, whatever your preference, it is a Japanese word. This is goat hair, this is a large one, it's roughly two inches wide at the top here uh, and it's chisel shaped. This is a brand new one you can see on here. And what I want to do is I want to show you why this brush is so important and how versatile it can be and how exciting it is if you just let go and uh, try something really adventurous. So I've drawn a, a very simple horizon across here, a quarter of the way up from the bottom. And this is going to be the most simple of scenes, coastal scenes, with a lovely sweeping sky, lots of colours in it, um, depicting a sunset and then a beach below. And I might just paint a couple of people walking on the beach here just to, to finish it off. So the first thing to show you is the palette, and this is really important. Uh, what I've done here is I've put out quite a big blob of ultramarine and I've stirred this into a really sludgy puddle. It's a sort of consistency of oil. And then I've stirred in some light red and converted this into a really strong, deep plum colour. It looks quite black on the screen, but you'll see it much better once it spreads out onto the paper. And I've also got on my palette here a spot uh, straight from the tube of uh, raw sienna. I've got some burnt sienna. I've got a little bit of alizarin crimson here. And I've got some burnt umber, which I will use later on. So the reason that uh, it's important to have these strong, undiluted paints and this, these thick mixers on the palette is because I'm going to put a lot of water onto the paper first with the brush. And if I then try introducing paint to that, which is diluted, it's just not going to have any substance. It'll be too runny and it'll all just sort of wash away and merge. So let's get started. I'm going to get my hake. And the first thing I'm going to do with this is to make sure that it's soaking wet. So it was dry when I picked it up. And I'm sort of punching it in the water, making sure that the brush is absolutely soaked all the way through and the brush head will swell up and fill with water. Now the touch with the hake is or hake. Please don't message me and tell me it should be pronounced hake or hake. The touch with this brush should be very very soft. I'm trying to retain the shape of this brush head the whole time I'm using it. If I press on too hard or press on at a, at a strange angle, the brush head will distort. Now I've put two or three good full brush loads of water on there first, and that's a bit boring for you to watch. So I'm gonna leave that just to soak in for uh, about 30 seconds or so, and then I will come back and put on some a little bit more water. This is the second lot of water I'm putting on there. You'll notice that I'm actually getting water on the tape. And again, this is important because if I leave the tape dry, the sky tends to dry round the edges first. Uh, so to try and keep the whole surface of the paper wet, it's important to get some water on the tape and on the board. Right, that's probably about right. From this point now, I'm not going to wash this brush out. And I think, again, that's a really important thing. So here's the palette. I'm going to just push the tip of the brush into the raw sienna. Give that a good shuffle from side to side, which helps pick up the paint. Turn the brush over, keep shuffling it, and that smooths the paint out so I haven't got any lumps in the brush. I'm going to just sweep this all the way across, long, broad brush strokes, look, all the way through. A little bit more of that. This time I'm going to just uh, hold the brush sideways on and sort of zigzag it across using the sharp edge of the brush to create some so lines, almost look like distant trail, uh, cloud trails. Okay, I'm gonna to move to the next color now. This is the burnt sienna. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in. 
Again, just diluting it. And I'm going to do exactly the same with this now. And this introduces another colour. I'm just sweeping the brush. Now I'm tilted it so it's broader, so I can sweep that colour across the upper part of the sky. Tiny bit of alizarin crimson. I don't want to overdo this because I don't want the sky to be too on fire. Just a little bit of the alizarin. I'm going to have this a little bit lower down just to give the sky a slightly red tinge, almost like at sunset. Just a tiny bit more just on this side here. This is probably where the sun is starting to set down in this lower part of the sky. I've just turned the brush now. This is the ver versatility of it. And I'm just using that trailing corner to sweep that colour across there. Right, now I'm going to go to the plum. So I'm not going to pick up too much to start with. I just want to get the upper part of the sky a little bit darker. So I'm sweeping that across. Lovely, long, broad brush strokes working from the shoulder. So my whole arm is moving across there like that. And now I'm going to just use the, just going to use the, the what's left in the brush just to create a few, again, lines further down. I just want to create this effect of this sweeping wind blown sky. Right, um, a little bit more now. This time I'm going to use the hake. Keep turning the brush head to vary the width of these brush strokes. And I'm going to just create what look like some clouds sweeping away in the upper part of the sky. Again, just turning the corner of the brush head so that you just get those lovely narrow bands. Like that. And then just one or two more lower down. I don't want to do too much more to this sky now, I don't think, because that's looking really strong. Just perhaps a little bit more at the top. Just while there's still a little bit of water left on the paper. It's important to remember that the water that's on that paper is evaporating the whole time. And we've got these paint pigments which are now starting to settle down onto the paper. The water is still active but the paint is now starting to bed down on the paper and it's starting to granulate. All the edges of the clouds are lovely and soft and everything is just looking gorgeous there. It would be fatal now to touch that again. And this is one of the big problems that I find that we have. Because we're humans, we feel that we just want to carry on, do a little bit more. And I can absolutely promise you that leaving that to just dry naturally and settle is the best thing you can do. Right, so I left that to settle for a while and I have completely and utterly dried that for quite a long time with a hairdryer. When you dry it, it will go as flat as a pancake again. And I'm gonna use some masking tape on this now to ensure that I get a lovely straight horizon. So the paper has to be completely dry. I'm also using quite a special tape. You can just see it on the inside of the roll there. It's called Tiki Tape. It's quite yellow, this tape. This is available on the website. And this is made for the car industry, actually. So it's a particularly strong tape. And it's very sticky. But as you're gonna see later on, uh, when we take the tape off, so long as we're really careful and we heat it up, then we can get it off without tearing the paper. So I'm just putting the tape here, look, on to this just so that you can just see the pencil line. So I'm now pressing down really hard with my finger. You can see possibly the week my finger end is going white as I press down really hard. You can actually just run your nail across it. And the idea is that the glue goes right down into all the little, little dips on the paper now and it seals it so that it doesn't leak. I've also left myself a piece here of probably about 15 centimetres at the end, which is again really important because when we heat the tape up to remove it, we don't want to be burning our fingers with the hairdryer. So I'm going to put the beach on first with the hake uh, using lots of really wet raw sienna and a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of burnt umber. They'll all go into the beach and while that's wet, I'll very quickly 
put the C in. So again, let's just prepare the palette. This time, this plum colour, because I'm painting it onto dry paper, I need to get this wetter. Now it is a sunset, so the sky, the sorry, the sea will be quite dark now. And uh, the sun sort of dropped below the horizon, so the sea will be quite dark. So I want it to be strong, but I need it to flow because I've got to paint that sea very quickly. So I've added some water to it to loosen that off. And the raw sienna on, is here on the palette. I'm going to wet the hake now. Here it is. Let's get some water in the hake. So a full brush load of water. So now I'm going to go into the raw sienna. And you can see now that the because the brush has got a lot of water in it, I've deliberately filled it with water so that the raw sienna is really wet. Okay, let's give this a go. So I'm going to sweep the raw sienna all the way across here. You'll see the intention of the position of the sea there. I carefully just get that in place first, dropping that down there so that the sea is wider at this end and then I can sweep the rest of that raw sienna into there really quickly. Let's get a little bit of the burnt sienna and I'm going to pull that across and this will just sort of variegate the colour of the of the sand and a little bit of burnt umber. Not too much and finally a touch of the plum. Just a little bit here and there and what that does is it gives the beach a lovely variegated colour. Just like you would see undulating sand on the beach. Now this is still wet. It's important now that I get straight on and paint this sea. So I'm filling up this uh, number eight brush with this, this plum colour. And now I'm going to go right across the tape first. Really important that I get right on there. And then I'm going to come across, I'm going to try and leave a few very narrow bands of light in there, just really narrow strips, which will just look like some waves out on the sea. I'll have one or two a little bit closer in here as well. And then the last action really is to pull the brush all the way down, dropping it really down at a low angle. And I'm pulling it all the way through now so that the side of the brush catches the raw sienna below, which is still wet. And that should give me a lovely soft edge. What could be simpler than that? Right, so I've dried that off and I'm going to put the hairdryer on. So it'll make a bit of a noise, but I just want to show you how I'm going to move this tape off the paper now. So it's on a hot setting. And I'm going to, get, going to get it really close to the tape. This is why we need this long bit here, so that it doesn't burn your fingers. And then I'm very slowly going to peel this tape away. And there it is, the perfect straight line. And there is no residue on the paper at all. Uh, there are other masking tapes that will often leave residue on the paper. This just all comes off. So uh, all that remains there for me to do is maybe put a little headland on, just on this right-hand side, using a little bit of the same plum colour that we've just used to paint the beach. I'm just going to use a number six spearhead brush. I'm not, I don't want a big one. I don't want it to be too complicated. I've just filled it up with paint there. And I'm just running it in from the right and I'm just going to bring that down to a point. So I'm not making a big feature of this, it's just a, a little headland coming in from the right there. Some of you may have seen other videos of mine where I explain that people are nothing more than just sort of carrot shapes. I'm going to put these on freehand. I'm just going to put them right over here on the left hand side, a couple of small figures. I'm going to start with the heads just above the horizon. I'm going to start there like that, and then I'm going to bring this down. And it's just a carrot shape. 
put another one at the side. There we are, so we can see. Let's just have them just touching each other. And I'm going to put the head is just a dot. Quite literally, I'm leaving a little gap, but I want them to look like they are together perhaps romantically involved a little bit of positive body language look we'll just put the heads tilting into each other just slightly and then I'm just taking a little bit of paint out of the brush I'm going to put the a very short shadow a little flick on each one which sort of just grounds them onto the beach so I've decided I'm going to put a couple of birds in here as well just using the rigger really tiny ones I don't want them to be too too dominant just maybe over here about a third of the way in just a couple of very small birds like that so that's it I'm going to leave that exactly as it is it is the most straightforward and basic composition, but because of the power of that hake brush uh, and the amount of paint and colour and water you can get on in such a short time, this really is a very quick painting. I hope you have fun having a go. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on another video.